It was a week ago today that a deranged teenager called Salvador Ramos murdered 19 children and two teachers in an elementary school this in thing Texas. Me up, guys. You know this because we've had seven oh days gosh. of full saturation coverage, and it's all deserved. Oh, Lord. Given that, it's amazing what we still don't know about what happened that day. Let's start just because it's the most obvious with how the shooter could possibly have afforded the firearms he used. Salvador Ramos yeah, was, was 18 years too. old. He worked part-time at the drive through at a local Correct. Wendy's. Yet police say he had at least $4,000 of brand new weapons, including two AR-15 rifles, 1,600 rounds of 5.56 what? ammunition, a ballistic vest, and 60 magazines. One of Ramos's rifles was a... From working part-time at Wendy's, how in the world? How? How, how you afford that for working part-time at Wendy's, bro? What type of rich dad going... Mm. Yeah, I, I hope they really tracked his dag on finances to see how he was able to afford it. Ammunition, a ballistic vest, and 60 magazines. Ballistic vest? One of Ramos's rifles was a high-end model manufactured by a company called Daniel Defense. According to a receipt that Ramos posted in a private message, that gun cost $2,000, and he... What? That's a mortgage, man. That's rent. That's three cars. That's, that's a lot. I mean, that's three car notes. What? The, come on, man. How does man get... Come on. Come on. Paid in full. Now, Ramos could have bought effectively the very same rifle at any gun store for a third of the cost. But apparently, to Ramos, price was no object. That's pretty weird. Wow. If police know where Ramos got the money to buy one of the most expensive AR-15s on the market, they're not telling us. Nor, for that matter, have they explained why they lied about the most basic facts of the shooting. For the first 24 hours, they told us that a school resource officer fired at the gunman. He, quote, engaged Ramos. But they must have known at the time they said it that that was not true. They must have known the, re the resource officer was not even at the school when Ramos arrived. But they told us otherwise. Why'd they do that? And by the way, how long was Ramos outside the school firing his gun at people at a nearby funeral home before he went inside and killed children? That seems like... Yo, the only, only way I could think of that, that the police um, department would lie about anything is so that they can pass, um, they could pass responsibility off. They, they would much rather not... Because if they take the hit of them doing things improperly or doing things wrong, um, then a lot of them could lose their jobs. Or even or or be sued by the school, or be school school um, sued by the parents in the school. I mean, it's it's many different things that can happen. So of course they're gonna try to play this real close. See, that's why don't nobody trust anything. Don't nobody trust the law because of stuff like this. Integrity comes into play when when something this oh my this horrible happens, and someone drops the ball. Could have done something differently. And now they're trying to get their stories together. Gun at people it's at crazy, a nearby man. funeral home before he went inside and killed children. That seems like a fairly simple question. Certainly an important question. Last week, authorities told us that Ramos was outside the school for 10 to 12 minutes. Here's the claim. We got a crash and a man with a gun. And then you have responding officers. That's what it is. If it's 12 minutes, from 11.30 to 11.40, that's the information we have. 12 minutes from 11.30 to 11.40, that's the information we have, quote. But that information is clearly wrong because 11.30 to 11.40 is not 10 minutes. 12 minutes. The timeline matters. So what's the real timeline? Well, on Friday, the director of Texas DPS came up with a brand new timeline. Here it is. 11.28. The suspect vehicle crashes into the ditch, as previously described. Okay, I see what he did. 1128 to 1140. See, he fixed that thing because he said, man, we told him 12 minutes. We need to figure out how to stick to that 12 minutes. Well, how can we get to 12 minutes? Well, we're going to have to drop it a little earlier and then, and, and then add two, carry the one, and then that's how you get 12. The teacher runs to the room 132 to retrieve a phone, and that same teacher walks back to the exit door and door remains propped open. At 11.33, the suspect begins shooting into room 111 or 112. It's not possible to determine from the video angle that we have at this point in time. 
So actually, and that was the director of public safety in Texas, it was only five minutes that Ramos was outside shooting at people. Okay. But here's the key takeaway from that statement. Here's what they want you to believe. The back door to the school was open because a teacher at the school left it open after going outside to retrieve a phone. So it's the teacher's fault that Ramos was able to get inside. That's what they said on Friday. But this, too, appears to be untrue. The Houston Chronicle is reporting tonight that surveillance footage of the school shows that the teacher slammed the door after running back inside. And, of course, that would make sense since by this point, Ramos was firing his rifle. And that same teacher was using the phone in question to make a panicked call to 911. No one disputes that. So why did the authorities tell us otherwise? And for that matter, why did they initially deny that the on-scene police commander ordered cops to stand down and remain outside as children were being shot to death inside the school? What? Now, I know a lot of you know a lot about being police, all right? A lot of y'all know a lot about combat. They probably had to make sure that they were safe first before they went in there, but they had to go up in there. And guess what? We're talking about children, guys. I don't know about you, but even if it's not my job, if it's children involved, I'm putting my life in jeopardy to save those kids. Again, whether I'm, and I, I got you, you're at work, you're probably instructed not to move forward and all that other stuff. There had to be somebody on a daggone force that was out there that day that was like, man, screw that. It's kids in there. They're shooting in there. We need to get in there. We got to shoot it out with a bad guy. So what? Maybe I just, maybe I just, mm, I don't know, man. Um, I know there's rules to everything. There's ways you're supposed to do stuff. But come on, man. We're talking about kids. On Thursday, a spokesman for Texas DPS called that account a rumor, quote. But there was videotape to show that it was true. It actually happened. So the next day, forced by the videotape, Texas DPS admitted the rumors were true. Watch. What efforts were the officers making to try and break either that door or another door to get inside that classroom? None at that time. Why? Why? The, the on-scene commander at the time believed that it had transitioned from an active shooter to a barricaded subject. We're well aware of that. Obviously, ob obviously, you know, based upon the information we have, there were children in that classroom that were at risk, and it was, in fact, still an active shooter situation and not a barricaded subject. But that's not really an explanation, of course, because no one disputes that everyone on the scene, including police, knew that Ramos had weapons, was firing them at people to kill people, and was inside the school with children. No one disputes that. So why did heavily armed police units decide not to stop Salvador Ramos from executing children? Now, that's not finger pointing to ask that question. These are very complicated circumstances. People are under immense pressure. People make mistakes. But we are making long-term policy decisions based on the specifics of what happened last week in Uvalde. Politicians across this country are calling for militarizing America's elementary schools. And yet they can't answer why the military force effectively outside this elementary school refused to stop the killing. So this massacre could have been prevented at some point. It was not prevented. Why was that? We should know the answer, but don't hold your breath. Maybe they was looking at it as, and this is, uh, hopefully this doesn't sound ridiculous. They probably thought that they can get to a point where they could um, talk him off the ledge call him, you know, like they do when somebody's robbing a bank or something like that, when they say it was a barricaded situation. I don't know how they would, maybe they checked all the doors. I don't know. Maybe they tried to get in some of the windows and all the windows were covered. I don't know what barricaded situation is. But I go back to my original point, man. There's children in there. I hear gunshots. I'm going in. A fireman see fire. He hear, he hear women or children in there screaming. He could even hear a man in there screaming. 
he's going in. He's putting his life in. in, in it. No one in power seems anxious to hold themselves accountable for what happened in Uvalde. And amazingly, and this is so perverse it's hard to believe it's true, it's but it is. It's almost time to vote. That's some seem why. determined to make future school shootings more likely. In California, the state assembly just voted to end the requirement, the longstanding requirement that was put in place after school shootings, that schools alert law enforcement when students, quote, attack, assault, or physically threaten school officials. That's no longer in place. And according to the Democratic Party, that's a win for equity. We know this because the sponsor of the bill, a California state senator called Stephen Bradford, said so. Here's what he told the Daily Caller, quote, Black students, Latinx students, students of color, and students with disabilities are disproportionately referred to law enforcement cited and arrested, end quote. Wow. So too many Latinx students in wheelchairs apparently are being blamed for school shootings, so there's no more violence reporting in California schools <sighs> at all. So how does that help prevent the next school shooting? Well, of course it doesn't. But it's starting to seem like helping prevent school shootings is not really the point of this exercise. Amassing more power is the point. And we know this from what's happening north of us. Canada's Botox dictator, Justin Trudeau, wasted no time in using the tragedy in the U.S. to his own political advantage in Canada. Now, Uvalde is more than 2,000 miles from Ottawa. But because of what Salvador Ramos was allowed to do in Texas, Canadians are no longer allowed to protect themselves. Justin Trudeau has introduced a bill that would ban Canadian citizens from buying, selling, and transferring handguns within their own country. Again, handguns were not the cause of the shooting in Uvalde. Uvalde is nowhere near Canada. And yet, Justin Trudeau is using that tragedy to disarm anyone who disagrees with him. And that's why, Trudeau, that's why Jordan Peterson don't like you, man. <laughs> You're an opportunist. It seems like you really don't care. You see an opportunity to jump on something that's going to be beneficial to you and, and what you're trying to gain, and you do it. That's your Jordan Peterson, is he might be on something. I don't know you. I don't know what type of man you are. I do know that this play looks extremely messy. I do know that. I know that much. And you're not even going after the same guns that even performed this. And this is ridiculous, man. You're not even trying to hide what you're doing. It's crazy. By the way, that law would empower courts to f confiscate guns from people, even if they've not committed a crime. Watch Justin Trudeau announce this power grab, and as you do watch, pay special attention to the masked toadies behind him nodding in unison. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. What's actually happening here is that people like Justin Trudeau know that their rule is illegitimate. They know perfectly well how resented they are, and they spend an awful lot of time thinking about civil unrest. You probably don't. You live in a democracy, so you don't imagine that anyone needs to be disarmed for political reasons. But people like Justin Trudeau can feel the deep resentment aimed at them, and they are fully intent on disarming the population. Now, we reached out to Justin Trudeau's office today about this new law. We wanted to know if Trudeau will apply these laws to himself. That's always the first and most important test of, sinc of sincerity. If it's good for me, it ought to be good for you, too, and vice versa. So, in this case, will Justin Trudeau's state-funded bodyguards be relinquishing their handguns? And how about their banned AR-15s? But, of course, we're not allowed to know the answer to that question because he... Nah, heck nah, they're not. Heck nah, they're not. They're not going to give up their guns. They just want everybody else to give up theirs. So that when we're ready to take whatever we need to take from you, we can do it. Why? Because it's law. I'm, I'm putting, yeah, that's definitely a power grab, man. I don't know what the laws are in Canada. I barely even know the dang on laws here in the U.S. I'm, that's what I'm trying to learn now. But at the end of the day, man, that's just ridiculous. It's, it's I don't know, man. It's, it definitely comes off as a power grab, for real. It, it definitely does. For sure. He's in power and we're not. Quote, we do not comment on matters related to the prime minister's security his office responded, meaning, of course not. Justin Trudeau isn't that stupid. He's gonna to continue to protect his own family. Absolutely. You're just not gonna be allowed to protect yours in Canada. 
Now, here in the United States, as always, Democrats are watching very carefully what Trump Trudeau is up like to that, as they man. plan our future <laughs> here. And already the rhetoric of the Democratic Party has changed for years. Democrats, Joe Biden, his supporters of the media have talked about banning AR-15s, the so-called weapons of war, which are not, in fact, used by any military. But weapons of war have been their focus. Watch. The venom of the haters and their weapons of war. Assault-style weapons that are weapons of war. And, and purchase these weapons of war. To get these weapons of war. Finally ridding our streets of weapons of war. What we should Come be doing on, bro, is taking so these dumb. weapons of war out of the hands of they, civilians. Because they see what these weapons of war weapons do of on the war. street. An assault weapon is a weapon of war with no place, no place in a civil society. So that's what we do in politics? Come on, man. All right, guys. So y'all already know what today's meeting is, right? We're coming up with the phrase of the day. I can see them blowing little blowing bubbles and, and hula hooping and all super excited. Oh, we got a phrase of the day. We got a phrase of the day. And it's fun. It's fun. And the more you say it and it gets some spin on the internet, you get a you get a bonus, huh? Whenever you can, you got that microphone. Oh, yes, they want to interview me. Oh, I'm about to give it to them. I don't know. What's going on with the weather today? It's kind of hot. Something like weathers of war. Dun dun. What the heck, man? <laughs> it's like weapons of war, weapons of war. It takes all the it's not genuine. It's not genuine at all. It's cold, actually, because you got a message to get out there and you're going to do just that. And guess what? The, the, the thought that you naturally have in you as a human being, something that came from your own um, cognitive understanding of what's going on in the world, your own research and in, in how you feel deep down inside as an individual, that's out of the window. Why? Because you have been assigned you and the rest of your crew everybody that came to that meeting or was sent the daggone email okay today's phrase is that's all you got to say and that's it don't don't veer off don't don't go off script you go off script you we remove your bonus they wouldn't know what end the bullet comes out of they know nothing about this topic they don't even know the basic crime stats. In the United States, rifles kill fewer people every year than fists or knives do. There's no effort afoot to ban knives or fists. But weapons of war have long been their focus, meaning AR-15s, the single most popular self-defense rifle in the United States. Self-defense is the point. On Sunday, Congressman Adam Kinzinger has decided and says it out loud that in order for him to feel safe, we're gonna need to confiscate your rifle because he feels unsafe. Watch. Congressman, you do still oppose a ban on the kind of assault weapons that were used in the shooting. Can you explain why private citizens need weapons of war? Weapons of war. Look, I have opposed a ban, uh, you know, fairly recently. I, I think I'm open to a ban now. Can, can you explain, Congressman, why private citizens need weapons of war? Now, CNN anchors need to be surrounded by bodyguards with weapons of war because they're important. But you and your family, no, you don't need weapons of war. So for years, it's been about the AR-15, but things are changing. See, this is why I don't trust politics that much, because it's like, um, and, and, and even news sources, because they have their own agenda and their agendas are blatant, blatant. They know that if they say it enough, you're going to start to think about it. You're going to hear it and you're going to start to think about it. You're going to think about it, think about it. And then next thing you know, you're going to be saying it to other people. Man, we don't need, that was clearly weapons of war. That's, that's what it was. And then the person they talking to is going to be like, whoa, that was, that was interesting you say that. Sound like you got a little bit of ed education. Where'd you get that, brother? Uh, from the news. And they said that it's weapons of war. And if you got one, you need to be giving it up. Because it's not for defense. Self-defense, that's too much. That's not for self-defense. That's for rolling out on the grass and trying to avoid landmines. That's what that's for. If you got that gun, 
you must be out there trying to dag on the void landmines and, and, and people who don't speak your language that's trying to kill you because you're over in that country or whatever the case may be. That's what that is. That's a weapon of war, bro. You need to go get turn it in. Turn it in. Matter of fact, give it to me. I'll go turn it in for you. No, no problem. I got it. And make sure you sign it over to me, too. All right? All right. Joe Biden is now calling for a ban on the ubiquitous 9 millimeter round. Watch this. A 9 millimeter bullet blows the lung out of the body. So the idea of these high caliber weapons is of, there is simply no rational basis for it in terms of what you hear about self-protection, hunting, I mean, I guess, and remember, the Constitution, the Second Amendment, was never absolute. You couldn't buy a cannon when the Second Amendment was back. So there's a guy who can't even recognize his own wife of 40 years in public lecturing us about what the rational basis is for this or that. Quote, there's simply no rational basis for the 9mm round in terms of self-protection. Well, of course, the opposite is true. The 9mm is the main self-protection round in the United States, along with the 5.56, the round used in the AR-15. Both of them are small rounds. People use them to protect their families. And if you take them away, Americans will no longer be able to defend themselves in the middle of a crime wave that was wholly manufactured by the same people who are trying to strip your guns from you. And that's, of course, the point. This is a power grab. And you can be certain that it is a power grab and not an effort to make this a safer country because the people who are calling for it are exempting themselves from its requirements once again. That is the acid test. If you're for a law, will it apply to you? Do Michael Bloomberg's bodyguards carry the dreaded 9mm or 223 rounds? Do they have high capacity magazines? Do Nancy Pelosi's bodyguards, which you pay for, do Mitch McConnell's bodyguards carry those rounds? Well, we wanted to know. Why wouldn't we want to know? Why don't we have a right to know? So we emailed all three of their offices today. <laughs> and unlike we have to say, Justin Trudeau's office, none question. of them even bothered to reply to us. So obviously they won't be disarming their own bodyguards. They'll keep their own weapons of war. In the meantime, they'll continue to pass legislation against weapons they know nothing about. They've been doing this for decades. We did a documentary on this, actually, and we spoke to probably the person who knows more about self-defense weapons than any living American, Hickok 45, one of the most popular figures on YouTube and truly an expert on the use of firearms for self-defense. Here's part of what he told us. And, and of course, it has the, the famous uh, Tucker Carlson barrel shroud on it. Barrel shroud. Guns that Hickok 45 is referring to Congresswoman Carolyn McCarthy of New York, who famously didn't understand the firearm she was trying to ban. Do you know what a barrel shroud is? Particular time. I actually don't know what a barrel shroud is. Oh, okay, because it's in your it's a legislation. It's thing that goes up. No, it's not. So a barrel shroud no, makes the not. knife more deadly, right? Yeah, really. Shrouds that barrel. <laughs> you know, a lot of what people come up with that do not know firearms. They just uh, do not not like them they hate them and you know so they're looking for reasons to hate them they, they don't know anything about the cartridges a bullet is dangerous let's, let's face it a hammer a chainsaw a ladder a car they're potentially dangerous wow Tucker ain't have to call that lady out like that though man let her act like she knows she's talking about with guns man let her you ain't gotta call her out you ain't gotta check her right there on the spot pull her to the side be like you do know that that that's not what you, that's not what you, uh, what you think it is, right? You don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's okay. It's okay. I've been there before. You know, we're all stupid until we learn something. Right. Right. Now you just learned something. That means you're not as stupid as you was two minutes ago. It's okay. I got you. I got your back. It's about us. It's about us. And y'all let me know what y'all thought about that in the comments below. If you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing per usual, and I am only catching up on the news. That's the only reason why we're doing this. We're trying to figure out what's going on. All right? Love y'all. Bye.